Hello, it's Scott Manley here. You may know me from videos such as Freaking Jebediah Kermin Out and uh, Crashing Stuff Into The Moon At High Speeds. Yes, it's another Kerbal Space Program video, but instead of a game video, I'm going to go out into the real world and uh, point out that some of the crazy ideas that people have in the game actually have some root in reality. This is a series called Real World Kerbal Space Program. So let's go back to the late 1990s to the Mojave Airport before it was known as a spaceport. Here we find a private company employing a bunch of rocket scientists whose plan is to take two guys and a ham sandwich into orbit by means of a helicopter, or as they call it, a rotary rocket. Now their original idea was to have the rotor blades attached to the top of a rocket and essentially power those by little rockets on the tip. They would fly up to a high altitude and once the air thinned sufficiently they would switch over to an internal engine that would boost it up into orbit and in theory would save them a bit of fuel. It turns out that it didn't save them that much fuel on paper. It would get them the rotors into orbit basically for free. But then once you're in orbit, you'd be able to come back down and use the rotors to uh, slow your descent and land safely. I mean, unlike the space shuttle, you wouldn't need a runway and, and rotor blades actually take a lot less mass than the, the wings on a space shuttle. And of course, unlike parachutes, you'd actually be able to pick where you landed and soft land things. Now, if that wasn't innovative enough, they had this crazy idea for an engine that was based on an aerospike that was like a giant donut. It would basically, the whole thing would spin and would have like 96 tiny rockets around the exterior blasting rocket fuel through. Now, in the end, they abandoned this idea because partly because they had to get at investors and investors were already a little cagey about the one crazy idea. But the investors money did end up going into building a fully functioning test vehicle that was able to test the, the helicopter part of things. It was like a rocket. It looked a bit like the Delta Clipper. It had rotors on the top and a place for the pilots to sit. Now, apparently visual, uh, it was so hard to see out of the cockpit that the pilots would describe it as the bat cave. Um, the test pilots apparently decided that it was one of the hardest things to fly because the torque from the rotor blades would cause the thing to randomly rotate and they were never quite sure if they were in control. Oh yeah, one of the test pilots, he was uh, Brian Binney. He was the guy that uh, flew, flew Spaceship One on its second flight for the X Prize. And indeed, I should mention that the test vehicle was built by Scaled Composites, who of course went on to build Spaceship One. So in this test vehicle, they were able to uh, fly it around the Mojave Airport a few times. Um, there are some great videos out there showing this thing kind of flying along the flight line for a few minutes with the, the rocket spinning the, the rotor blades, making it sound kind of interesting. They had planned for a, a test flight that involved flying up to 10,000 feet and then essentially letting it descend, auto-rotate down to the ground without, no, without any power. But that was, you know, first high-risk test. And at that point, the company was basically running out of money, so they thought that it was better to just quit while they're, they haven't killed anyone. The test vehicle never flew again, except for the one time when they tried to sling it underneath a, a Chinook helicopter to move it to San Diego, uh, except that apparently it was too aerodynamically unstable. So yeah, instead, uh, it's now on display at the Mojave Spaceport. And, you know, it kind of was the first private space project there. So in a way, it's kind of a, 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 while it was a failure, it was an important step, some might say. Anyway, that's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, you can probably try building these things in KSP. There are a few uh, rotor mods and stuff in there. But don't be surprised if they're impossible to fly, because apparently the real one was quite a challenge too. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. I'll see you around next time. Fly safe.